so I'm very, very pleased uh, that you that I got invited to to speak, and I I hope you uh, get something out of my talk. So, uh, oops. Oh, okay. I guess it's so. okay. Okay. So I'll just this is going to be a very um, Looking at give some sort of an overview of where um, how I got uh, what I'm doing now. So I just want to first talk about symmetric functions, the way I see it, basically. So you have um, so there are the Jack polynomials, and the um, and to me there this is where the the physics is. Whoops, whoa, 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 I'm sorry. This is where the the physics is, and uh, so what I mean by physics, I mean the uh, Jack polynomials are eigenfunctions of a uh, integral model known as the Kalajoz Hutterian model. This is really where I come from. As if like, I studied physics as a when I did my PhD, and it's it what and it's um, and it's you can really actually do real physics with Jack polynomials because they uh, they are very useful in conformal uh, field theory because mo many of the computations can have to be done with uh, the Virasoro Vira algebra. And it happens that the Jack polynomials are very natural when you want, basically, you, it's a very natural basis when you work with the Virasoro algebra. So many of the computations can be done, uh, be simplified in some sense using Jack polynomials. So this is why they're quite relevant in physics. And they have, and now I write, I've written the generalized Pauli principle, something that is very, uh, also very strange that, the, for instance, you would allow, uh, you, you all know that, I hope that you all know the, the the usual Pauli principle that tells you that you can have one particle in one state, but not two at the same times. But then you will have something generalized where you can, for instance, allow two particles in the same state, but not three. So this what what's amazing is that Jack polynomials can be uh, useful in that setting. So, and then if you move up, you get McDonald polynomials. In some sense, physically, it means that you're going to have a relativistic version of the of the model. But uh, for the rest of the talk, it's just going to be basically uh, symmetric functions. And to me, this is where the real combinatorics is. Like I put it in capital letters. I can. You probably all know that there is way more uh, combinatorics in some sense uh, having to do with sure functions. But the combinatorics of sure, uh, like of sure function, is in some sense easier. And there is really like we really have like outstanding outstanding problems when you go to McDowell polynomials. I'm just going to, uh, so this list of you, you have the McDowell positivity, you have the diagonal covariance, all of the Catalan combinatorics, you have connections with the uh, double FINAK algebras with elliptic algebra. So they, are, they have tons of connections. And the thing that has obsessed me like for the last 25 years is McDowell positivity. So I'll just explain it very uh, briefly. So when I write uh, here the, uh, so this is, I'm not going to do. Uh, I'm not going to distinguish uh, McDonald polynomials from modified McDonald polynomials. But when it's positive, these are modified McDonald polynomials. But I use the same notation, not just to not confuse uh, people. So the um, so McDonald polynomials when they're expanded in terms of sure functions have positive coefficients, and the the nice thing is that if you put Q and T equal to one, you get that this is the dimensions. These are the dimensions of the irreducible representations of the symmetric group. So basically, it has to do with a, a regular module of the symmetric group. And it's, in fact, what Heyman and Garcia did. They were able to find a, uh, a module, a bigraded module, that could, where if you looked at the, the number of representation of a certain type at a certain degree in x and certain degree in y, it really was these uh, qt cos coefficients. So that was. Uh, quite amazing, but it's not explicit in some sense. And uh, what I've been really looking uh, for is a, uh, a real, like a combinatorial formula for those coefficients. So um, just going to see what the type type of uh, what we're talking about. So uh, I'm going to assume that you all know what uh, standard tableaus are. So basically, it's, these are tableaus where the numbers increase uh, along the, the rows and they also increase along the uh, the columns and the uh, 
the problem in some sense that you have some freedom. Here you have two uh, standard tableau and here you have two monomials. So you don't know which one is which one. And in some sense, it's it makes things uh, quite hard to find a rule. Like you, what, we, what you want is to be, to be able to associate a Q and T power to uh, a given standard tableau. So that's a, a problem that has obsessed me for about 25 years. And today, basically, I'll tell you about some sort of an approach that I that I I feel that if I'm always getting closer and closer, but I feel this time that's I feel that I'm getting pretty close. So the uh, the table is this is the table that you could see in McDonald's book, but I want you to see one uh, feature that it has that is really quite amazing. It's something called called Butler's rule. So it means that if you you see here I I'm this circle, this box was moved to this posi position. So when you move a uh, a box from one position position to the other, the the, the table will split in two. So the red uh, monomials means that those that you from this one to this one you multiply by t, and this the same for all of the monomials in red and in the bl in blue. You're going to divide by Q. So you, here we have Q squared T and it goes to QT. Here we have Q and it goes to one. So we divide by Q. So all of, so half of the monomials, half of the table, when you go from one row to the other is multiplied by T and the other half is divided by Q. And this happens, so this happens every time that you have a, uh, you can go from one partition to the other by moving one box. So I'm just going to do one more example. If we, Take the same box here, but now we move it this time to this position. Again, it's going to half of the table will be multiplied by a power of t. So this time it's going to be t squared, and the other half, the half in blue, will be divided by a power of q. It's going to be q squared, uh, q squared in, in this case. So this is quite surprising. And of course, when you see that for the first time, you're saying, "Well, if I use that, it's it's this is a very strong property." It's uh, it's going to lead to a rule, but even knowing, even having this amazing uh, rule, there is uh, we don't know what nobody has been able to find a, a combinatorial uh, formula for the QT Koska. So this rule, where everything gets split, gets split in two, it's called Butler's rule. And the funny thing is that Lynn Butler is a, uh, she's a she's a twin. She has a perfect twin, and so it's kind of natural that this kind of splitting. In halves, uh, in halves, was done by uh, a twin. So I don't know which one is a mathematician. So um, the uh, so I'm just going to explain very very quickly the um, the uh, the Hecke algebra that we'll need uh, later on. So basically, you have uh, an action of the symmetry group on polynomials, switching variables, but then you can get a T modification of it. Using the what called the the Hecke algebra, so I'm just going to go very very uh, quickly, and it's uh, whoops, and it satisfies all of the like the braid relations and the commutations that you get with the symmetric group um, generators, but then you get this ti squared. Now it's not equal to one; it's going to be equal to this expression that depends on uh, on t. So and you see that when t is equal to one, we get ti squared is equal to one. Which is what you expect out of a out of a transposition. So uh, basically, what you uh, you can symmetrize using the symmetric group. So if we take this expression and we apply it on a uh, on a monomial, we're going to get this expression. And you see that this is like this is a symmetric uh, function in three variables. So it's a, so it's the monomial symmetric function in three variables. So we can, uh, so this is the symmetrization, but we can T-symmetrize using replacing the uh, sigmas or the, by the, genera gener the generators of the Hecke algebra. And what you get using that, you get, a, you get what it's called a T-symmetrization. And this, so it's gonna be the same as usual, plus a new part here that, um, that involves t, and you see that when t is equal to one, this extra part uh, disappears. You can see that what you what we get at the end is still a symmetric uh, polynomial, 
but it has uh, so it's one feature. So it's uh, it's going to be a symmetric polynomial, that, that, but this polynomial will depend on t. So that's the t symmetrization, and we'll need that this uh, later on. So I'll go. So now time is. So I'm going to go very quickly over that. So you, if you add two generators, t zero, t zero will make it a fine. It's going to be everything will work modulo n these uh, relations and then you had you had another generator and this will be the one that that will basically make the uh the other parameter q appear so now we have an, uh, an algebra that depends on two parameters q and t and out of them you can build i'm going to go very very quickly here uh what are called uh Cherenic operators and the nice thing is that they mutually commute so and they also send polynomials to polynomials. So that means that you can uh, they can be diagonal. You can you can find common eigenfunctions of those operators, and those common eigenfunctions are called non-symmetric McDonald polynomials. So the only thing that so for the rest uh, this went this was very quick. I I agree, but it does for but for the the purposes of this talk, the only thing that you need to know is that you have non-symmetric McDonald polynomials. They're indexed by compositions instead of being indexed by uh, partitions. And here is an example of a uh, non-symmetric McDonald polynomial. The uh, so the, the thing that I, the only thing that I want you to uh, to know is that if you t symmetrize a non-symmetric polynomial, you get a usual McDonald polynomial. So basically, if we look at this uh, non-symmetric McDonald polynomial, it's going to be associated. When you t-symmetrize it, it's going to give you up to a constant. It's going to give you the McDonald polynomial index by the partition that you get by reordering the entries 0, 2, and 1. It's going to be the partition 2, 1. I, I wrote it as 2, 1, 0, but you should think of it as a partition 2, 1. So again, you take non-symmetric McDonald polynomial. If you t-symmetrize it, then you get the usual McDonald polynomials. So uh, the nice thing when you do that, instead of directly working with McDonald polynomials, when you go through the non-symmetric McDonald polynomials, you have, you have way more structure coming from the double affine AK algebra, and the proofs are easier in some sense in this uh, setting. So this is quite, quite nice. But what you lose, you lose a, uh, there is no positivity conjecture and, uh, in uh, associated to non-symmetric McDonald polynomials. And you will see at the end that when we move to the M-symmetric uh, world, in some sense, you can see that that the world in which you have positivity, McDonald positivity conjectures for the usual non-symmetric McDonald polynomial. So that's kind of to me, this was kind of important to get to get the right setting so that you could extend the uh, the positivity conjectures to the non-symmetric case. So you'll see how this happens a bit later on. But before go going there, we're gonna uh, first I do one extension. It's intention. we're gonna. Uh, extend symmetric function theory, theory to uh, superspace. So basically what we do that, what we do, we add another set of variables, the thetas, and but these variables, they will anti-commute. So they're not going to be like usual variables. They will be anti-commuting variables. And the action of the symmetry group will be diagonal. So we're going to at the same, when, when we're going to act on the x variables, we're going to act at the same time on the theta variables. So the uh, so for instance, I'll show you one uh, easy example. So if you look at in two variables, if we act, if we switch uh, x1 and x2, we're gonna get x2 minus x1. So there's a sign that appears. But if we switch also theta one and theta two, we're gonna get theta two, theta one. And because these are anti-comedic variables, we're gonna also get a sign when we reorder it. So both signs, will cancel, they will. So we're gonna get that this uh, expression is invariant when you switch at the same time x1 and x2 and theta1 and theta2. So the idea is to try to, was to try to generalize the old uh, symmetric function theory to superspace. And the amazing thing that it worked pretty well. I'm gonna explain it very, uh, very quickly. So the usual power sums, you, get, you have the usual power, power sums, so they generate all symmetric functions. And now you're gonna have like a, you could say a fermionic version of them where you're just gonna multiply every monomial by 
uh, a theta. So theta one x one to the power k plus theta two x two to the power to the power k. And the nice thing is that those uh, like fermionic uh, uh, power sums they will also anti commute, and you also you will also get this uh, relation. So basically, because of this uh, feature, when you the natural way to index uh, uh, symmetric functions in superspace is, is with a super partition. And basically, it's just a uh, two partitions, except that one of them, the one associated to the non the fermionic entries in some sense, has to have distinct entries. So this part in red has to have distinct uh, entries. And the nice thing is that you, all, you also have a, a very uh, Way uh, like a, you can also use a Young diagram to see those uh, superpartitions, and it's very very natural. You just re, uh, you just mix. You have this uh, vector. You just reorder it, and then you just keep track of where are the fermionic entries, like the red numbers four, two, and zero, and so you're going to put a circles at the end of all of the rows. That are fermionic, and the nice thing is, say, so some sense for this talk, you could should think of superpartitions as is simply a uh, a usual partition, but you're gonna allow uh, circles at the end of each uh, at the uh, circles on the diagram, but you can ne never have two circles in the same row or in the same column. So that's kind of the the rule, and. Uh, so when we started studying that, I uh, I'm gonna go a bit. Quickly on that, we were looking at it as a as physicists in some sense. And when you look at it uh, from the point of view of physicists, physicists, everything works. Everything that I talked about, there is a uh, basically there's a generalization to superspace or to to supersymmetry. So yeah, we had VR several algebras. Now we have super VR several algebras. We had conformal field the theory. Now we have super. So everything works uh, very well, except that it's much more complicated. And in some sense, uh, I would say that I was never really that pleased that you, you basically you get all of those results, but it's in a world that is way more complicated. And in some sense, you're asking yourself, is it really worth it? And the, uh, the thing that really disappointed me the most was that if you put alpha is equal to one, I was expecting, you expect to get sure functions, so expect really nice combinatorics, and there were no combinatorics. And for me, it means that you, the numbers were uh, like you had negative num numbers, you had uh, fractions, so it didn't really make make much, uh, didn't really make uh, made much much sense. But what we did, we so I was not really keen on trying to guess what uh, to study McDonald polynomials because now we would move in a world that would be even harder. But what, to my great surprise, when we moved to that, the real interesting uh, things happened there, and the reason is that in some sense. When you put q in t, q is equal to t in the usual case, everything becomes a sure function. But when, but in super space, what you have, you get you get you the one parameter family here of sure functions. And the two interesting cases are the ones when q and t are equal to zero or when q and t is infinity. So I'm going to go and say that it's my time is. Uh... So basically, for our, our uh, basically for this talk. The easiest way to think about a McDonald polynomial in superspace is just taking a non uh, symmetric McDonald polynomial, and we're going to anti symmetrize the first M entries, and we're going to T symmetrize the rest of the entries. So that's basically the, what we do. So if we want to get this uh, McDonald polynomial in superspace, we, we take any uh, Non-symmetric McDonald polynomial, polynomial who's, and then where the indexing uh, composition, st the first two numbers, like zero and three, they need to reorder to three zero, and the remaining entries they just need to reorder to four uh, two two. So that's the uh, kind of the the rule. And uh, the nice, I'm gonna go. Uh, so to me, what really blew my mind was that. In this setting, you have now an extension of the usual McDonald posit uh, positivity conjecture or theorem to uh, superspace. And, but here, with the numbers that we get, 
we don't really understand. We understand when they are combinatorially, but there's no um, representation, uh, theoretic ex explanation for those numbers. Um, so they were still mysterious, and but still, I want to show you one thing that is quite interesting. If you if you look at the uh, the usual uh, McDonald positivity conjecture in that case. And now when you move to superspace, when there's only one circle, in this case, there's only one circle, you see that now the freedom that we had is, is gone because now the Q, this Q monomial goes to this one and this T monomial goes to that one. So in some sense, what we have is that we have a refinement of the original problem. So to me, that was quite amazing. The sense that now we were having a, gener a generalization to superspace of the usual combinatorics, but except that when we move to superspace, things that things were telling us uh, when we had new information on the usual um, case. So to me, that was really fascinating. But of course, if you uh, kind of go high enough, higher, higher, you're still going to have freedom. Okay, so it's not going to be easy to find a rule. Even I mean, things are more precise, but still they're not perfect. So basically, they're not refined enough. So for a long time, my goal was how to get a better refinement of, of this conjecture. So the natural thing when you uh, think of it as a, as a physicist is that you can, what we saw before we had the usual variables, and then we added one set of, we, had, we added anti-committing variables, but you can also add any number of of families of committing uh, of anti-committing variables. So here in this example, I've added two families, like the theta families and the phi and the phi families. So now instead of having one type of fermions, I have two types of fermions, and they they all anti-commute. And but so this really seemed like the the nice way to keep uh, um, getting a better refinement except that the combinatorics is not that nice. It's not very illuminating. And it, it seems that it was that it's really that it was not the way to go. But the surprising thing is that if you impose that extra condition, so for physicists, it's not something that really makes much sense to impose that, that theta i phi i is equal to zero. So, but, but anyway, so if you impose that, that condition, things become much more uh, interesting or simpler. So what it means in some sense in our understanding is that you're going to have a, it's again this thing, we're going to have a, a non-symmetric McDonald polynomial, but instead of having being, we're going to anti-symmetrize and, and then t-symmetrize, we're going to have very, lots of anti, a bunch of uh, variables that you're going to anti-symmetrize, plus at the end of it, you're going to have a t-symmetrization. So so basically what it means is that we're going to have, uh, so again, so it's a bunch of anti-symmetrizers and plus T-symmetrization. So the, this seems like a fascinating world, but for me, it's a bit disappointing in the sense that uh, you need very high um, non-symmetric McDowell polynomials. Of, uh, you need non-symmetric McDowell polynomials of very high degrees and with lots of variables. So it's basically, uh, like it's hard, to, they're hard to compute. So it's hard to basically explore this, this world because it's just too, uh, it's just, you would need too much computer power to, to do it. But the case that is very interesting is that if you have only one particle of, of each type, you only need, need to anti-symmetrize one variable. But if you do that, it's like doing nothing. So the easiest case is the case where you just uh, start symmetrizing at the M plus one, uh, letter. Uh, so basically what you have is that the first M entries are kind of free and then you start symmetrizing from the M plus one letter and this is what I call these are the M symmetric McDonald polynomials. So what sort of kind of uh, indexing partition that we're going to get? We're going to get a uh, so basically you could do it at, as, as having a bunch of circles and all of different colors and basically what it means that the uh, so in that case, I'm gonna we're gonna look at the instead of having uh, circles, I'm gonna put numbers. So here I have a one. So that means that there's the one is it 
in a row of size zero. So that's why I have a zero here. And now the two, uh, the two is in a row of size four. So this is why there's a four. This is a row of size two. There's a two. And the remaining rows are of size five, of size four, one, and one. So this is basically the indexing uh, set for my uh, object. And uh, this is, a, I'm gonna go very quickly on that. It's a, a world that is very similar to the, uh, the world of McDonald's polynomials. And it's a world that is much simpler than the world of, um, of McDonald's polynomials in super space. So it's kind of nicer. And for those of you, I'm gonna go very, very quickly, but basically you have, in the usual case, you have a, the McDonald's McDonald polynomials are orthogonal with respect to a scalar product, product that you define on the power sums. So the power sums, everything that is, is in red has to do with McDonald's polynomials. And, uh, and now I'm just gonna ex uh, extend it. So, so power, the, 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 uh, the power sums are, if you define a scalar product such that the power sums have this uh, scalar product, you're gonna take two McDonald's polynomials and you're gonna get this product. And you see that you can get a very nice team, uh, 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 modification of that to the M symmetric world. You're just gonna replace the, the power sums with those objects where the HAs are the non-symmetric McDonald polynomials that Q is equal to uh, zero. And then you do, and you see that it's very, very similar. You get, you define a scalar product and you get a uh, this orthogonality of uh, these M symmetric McDonald polynomials. So I'm gonna go, my time is short. So the, uh, they are very similar properties. The thing that I want you to see is that when the this entry is empty, so you have a the special case in which the uh, all of the rows have a a circle on them, you get these are simply non-symmetric McDonald polynomials. So the every non-symmetric McDonald polynomial is an M-symmetric McDonald polynomial as long as M is large enough. So Basically, what uh, we'll see, at, everything that I'll say at the end applies to non-symmetric McDonald polynomials. So now I have, I'm not going to say that. So I'm just now going to finish with the, this positivity conjecture. So what really killed me, the, the really, really tough thing in this world was to, I knew that I could sense that they were, there was a positivity conjecture in this, this world, but still I needed uh, true functions. And I knew that they depended this time on T, but they were, they were very, very hard to define. This took me, I think, to, took me five years to obtain the definition that I kind of liked, that was workable. And the uh, and one of the hard, the hard things is that the sure functions in that setting, they're not special cases of these M-symmetric McDonald polynomials. So it's not like you can take the object that I kind of just defined, put, uh, Q is equal to T and get the sure function. No, it's more complicated. So it's not easy to define them. I'm not gonna, gonna explain what, how to define them uh, today, but the nice thing that they can be defined and there are positive conjectures. And now I'm gonna try to convince you that they are nicer than the ones uh, in super space that we're now really having something that has lots of uh, structure. So, the, uh, so what is when you put Q and T equal to one, you get that it's just a number of standard tableau of a given shape. So that's quite amazing. So if we look at all of the, so these are all the, in some sense, it would be the partition that would be uh, associated to the partition uh, zero, two, semicolon and empty. So that would be my, uh, so you see that this is a, uh, the shape is, uh, whoops, Sorry, it's not zero, two. Uh, oops, it's one, three, sorry. Yeah. So it's one, sorry, it's one, three, and uh, the empty partition. So it's, uh, so the one is in a row of size one and the two is in a row of size uh, two. So the, so you see that now the, uh, the number, uh, the, what we need is we need to associate Q and T powers to a standard tableau, it's only that. 
And I'm going to explain to you some sort of a, a way where everything kind of seems to make sense. So uh, basically what we're allowed to do, we're allowed to add circles at the bottom. So this doesn't change the, uh, the value of, the, uh, of those coefficients. The other thing that you can do that is quite amazing, you can, uh, in that setting, you're gonna, we're going to want to exchange the three and the two. So this, I want to exchange three and two. And with that, before that, and when you do that, you're going to have exactly what I said at the beginning. You're going to have Butler's rule. So that means that among, among those three diagrams, maybe uh, some of them will be multiplied. Thank you, Luke. OK, let's do just one quick question. Any question from the audience? Um, can I have one? Um, is Thank there you. a HHL type formula? I mean, you need to make some kind of monomial symmetric function in that sense. But anyway, I I don't know. It would be it's a very interesting question. I don't know. Thank you. All right. Well, in the interest of time, if you have more questions for Luke, um, maybe we all go to the gather town and find him there. Um, so I'll put the link in the chat again, and we can uh, go to coffee break for a half hour. So then the final talk will be Ben Young in a half hour. So um, hope to see you there. All right. So there's the gather.town in the chat. Um, oh, and th let's thank Luke again. Great. Oh, 24 minutes, right. <laughs> Luke, maybe I can ask you a question actually here before we go okay. together. Um, these uh, these M symmetric shares that you said you defined, you didn't say much about them. Are, do they have a combinatorial definition, like a sum over standard semi standard Young tableaus of something? Yeah, it's basically that. So it's kind of complicated that, um, but the, in order to define them, I I need to define some sort of a dual. Uh, M, like dual M symmetric shear functions, and in the dual symmetric function, have, they have a kind of kind of a combinatorial uh, definition where it's in in based in the dominant case, like it's the case where the uh, the first M entries are uh, they they are uh, they form a partition. They're they're defined with a uh, yeah, it's exactly with the fitting of tableau with certain rules. It's quite simple, and then you can get everything uh there then there are some recursions to get all of all of them from that but in some sense what's very disappointing is that uh and then you keep <laughs> to get to define the functions you can the only way i found was to define them as the dual functions of those so that so it's kind of a little bit disappointing there it's it there there's not it's not an easy definition but yes if you look at the dual there is a they're defined combinatorially with with tableau cool Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll go to the gather town now too. Maybe people look for you there. So thanks for the talk. Thank you. So so I didn't really get that. So so you're going to move me to a room. Uh... Oh, so um, in the chat there's a link. Um, okay. To the uh, gather town space. Oh, okay, okay, like, okay. Move your little avatar. Okay. Around. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So do I need to log? Uh, okay. Yeah. So you can just mute on Zoom and log in there. Okay.